It's two years now since pro-Trump rioters stormed the United States Capitol in a violent and deadly attempt to stop the certification of Joe Biden's electoral victory. And two years on, this is where things stand. The president, who was impeached for inciting the insurrection, remains a free man. Many of the Republican senators who failed to convict him have returned to the Capitol for a new session of Congress. Oh, joy. The Justice Department, meanwhile, continues to weigh the January 6th committee's historic referral of the former president that it received two weeks ago, a referral which says there is sufficient evidence to prosecute Trump, prosecute Trump excuse me, for four crimes over the riot. The result of an 18-month investigation that included more than 1,000 witnesses interviewed, 100 subpoenas, and the review of more than 1 million pages of documents. The foot soldiers, at least, have been paying the price for the incredible violence that day. The DOJ has had a striking 99.8% success rate prosecuting 900 people arrested for their roles in that awful, bloody January the 6th attack. But nothing so far for the people who were pulling the strings, the leaders behind the scenes who were calling the shots. It's been two full years. How much do we even remember after all that time? Well, a new documentary is likely to bring it all back. Take a listen. I'm hearing some commotion going on outside the Senate floor. You know, it's only a matter of time before somebody is going to be able to get inside the chamber. They're coming from everywhere, and there's no stopping them. It's about that moment when the Capitol alarm goes off. Security pulled me right from the podium. Seeing her removed means we can no longer secure the chamber. The Capitol has been breached. The Capitol has been breached. We're in danger. You have, have to, to leave the chamber. Lock the doors. We need to move now. Go, go, go. A shot fired. This is going to be bad. You want to fight? You got it. People were banging on the door. Trying to barrel their way into the main door of the U.S. House of Representatives. I cannot believe this is happening. I call my wife. You know, that phone call. I texted my uncle, my will. We need to be able to fight with something. We need to find weapons. I have my gun out on my desk to defend myself. The new film, January 6th, which premiered Thursday on Discovery Plus, brings together the first responders and the survivors of the attack, the police officers, senators, representatives and staffers who all lived through one of the most infamous days in American history. In an era in which Americans have very short-term memories and the right is bent on moving on from the 6th of January 2021, hearing from these voices has never been more crucial. The film is executive produced by Igil Svet, the vice president of documentaries for Discovery Plus, and directed by Jules Norday. Jules has a history of looking at America's darkest days, having also directed an award-winning documentary about the September the 11th attacks. Earlier, I spoke to both of them. Igel, Jules, thank you both for joining me on the show today. Uh, Jules, let me start with you. How do you compare making a film about 9-11 to making a film about 1-6? Well, 9-11 was, well, of course, much more uh, personal as we lived through the attacks. And so, of course, the, the, the trauma was quite present. But making something about January 6th, even though it's not the same thing, of course, not the same amount of people who have lost their life, but the... The trauma of it by the people who lived it is quite identical. Um, all these people, uh, the similarities that we I saw, at least in, in both, was you had that same, and that's on a personal level, that same moment where you look at what's happening that day and you see, my God, I'm seeing the worst of, of what human beings have to offer in a way. And then you learn about these moments of courage, these moments of uh, er uh, um, heroism. And... That's the same thing that I take away from that. It's whenever uh, life, you know, you have an impression, it's the end. You always have the best of human nature that rises to the, to the surface, whether it was the police yeah. officers very bravely, incredibly heroically protecting the capitals, but also uh, some of the lawmakers and the, um, and the staffers who, whether it was comforting someone at a moment where they, uh, they think they're going to have a heart attack, or just, you know, trying to rush to the door to help the police officers barricade it and, and try to hold the line in a way. Uh, that was, these of the things were identical. And then, you know, we treat both subjects the same way. For us, what we've always done with my brother is to try to highlight uh, human nature and human beings. You know, we have a tendency to forget that behind this uniform, behind that title, there is a human being. There's a mother, a father, a, a, a son, a daughter. And that's what we wanted to show in both of them. 
And Igor, what made you want to make this film, commission this film? There have been so many documentaries and films already about the January 6th attack. What did you want the viewer to get out of this one? That's a great question, Maddie. I mean, we've been receiving, as you can imagine, a lot of January 6th pitches, even to this day. And I think it's a story we'll be unpacking for a long, long time. But it's important to remember that we got on board uh, commissioning this project very early on. We're talking about uh, 2021. And it was really it came down to three things. First and foremost, Jules and his brother Gideon are incredible filmmakers. Uh, you mentioned 9 11. They also have tackled November 13 on Tech in Paris. Discovery has a history with the brothers, with the gatekeepers. So when they bring in a pitch, we take it very, very seriously. And when they came in with a January 6 vision and pitch, which you just heard Jules uh, basically outline, they, their, their take yes. was. From you know, from the survivors, first-hand accounts, the TikTok of the day, not looking into a, a, a political investigations into what led, like what led to the events of January 6, but what actually took place from the people who were there, uh, it became very obvious for us. And of course, uh, uh, Howard Owens and Ben Silverman are the most talented producers uh, in Hollywood. So when that package kind of came together, we immediately swooped in took the project up the market and worked hand in hand with Jules and Gideon, Howard and Ben in shaping it and making sure that they have the right time, the right resources, and uh, and really they turn in a masterpiece. We are so proud of this documentary. Jules, how were you able to get all these people in power to sit down with you, to recollect what was, for many of them, I'm sure, the worst day of their lives? How hard was that to do? Well, I think, you know, like all things, it's the amount of preparation you put behind. Um, I, You know, we always say uh, trust is earned, it's not given, and so you have to take the time. Uh, before we filmed anything, we moved to D.C., and for four months did nothing but just meet people. And it's true that, as you rightly said, there is a lot of trauma from that day still lingering in, uh, you know, in the toll that uh, they took. And... Unfortunately, with our own uh, uh, deal with, uh, with with trauma because of 9/11, I think we were able to kind of talk the same language, so to speak. And so people were reassured. People liked the idea that what we wanted to do was not political. Again, we're not journalists. We're not. You know, we don't do investigation. All we do is we wanted to show the minute by minute uh, uh, of these human beings trapped in that horrible moment. And I think people um, uh, appreciated what we wanted to, to, to show and decided to participate. Was there a particular, Jules, was there a particular interview, interviewee that stood out to you that really surprised you more than any other? I think most of them are of the, the police officers. That was what took the longest, I think, to, to, to get the OK from the Capitol Police took five months and Metro Police took nine months. But listening to these incredible brave men and women talking about that horrible day. It, it, you have the impression they're talking about a, a movie like 300, you know, where uh, uh, 300 Spartans yeah. are holding out the entire Persian army. That was exactly the kind of things that they, they described, being 40 police officers in a small tunnel uh, on the west side of the capital and looking past it, then you have 25,000 people trying to get in. So I, I, I think... These people wanted to talk, especially the police officers. They were all very weary of, uh, of who to talk to. And I think we came at the right moment and with our past and, and, and the yeah. way we've always uh, portrayed people. I think that resonated with them. Igor, last question to you. A Monmouth poll found more... Um found how many Republicans still call January 6th a legitimate protest uh, rather than a riot. I mean, more Republicans actually call it a legitimate protest than they do a riot. Uh, that was uh, in the summer of 2022. How do you make documentaries and films for millions of people who have already sucked up conspiracy theories about this attack, who think Antifa did it and then blamed Trump supporters, or who think it was a false flag by the FBI? Are they part of your target audience, too? I know you say you're not political, but I do wonder whether this film is meant to educate, debunk, and fact check as well. I mean, look, I think you uh, you really nailed it. Uh, my job as a commissioner is to create content that is accessible to really both sides. And uh, it's actually interesting you mentioned it. There was a moment after we premiered the film at, at a film festival that uh, somebody came up to Jules and I was able to overhear the conversation. And this lady said, this film is incredible, and this is actually something I'll be able to share with my Trump-supporting family members over the holidays. 
And I was like, oh, my God, like, this is exactly what we are hoping to do. It's not to point fingers. It's to share this incredible story from the people who were there and to uh, and to let people make up their own mind and, and, and not to alienate, but to hopefully bring people together. Because when you watch it, I mean, Jules just mentioned Zack Snyder's 300. At points, it does feel like it. And these people are fellow American citizens. They were going to work that day. They were not expecting to have their lives in danger. Uh, nobody has. And so this is an important story for everybody to see and hopefully come come around. It's yeah. not a political investigation, but what took place is a fact. And these first and accounts are facts. And what you see uh, in the footage, these are all facts. And, uh, and we're really hoping that uh, the left and the right can enjoy the film equally. Well, as someone who points fingers for a living, uh, I appreciate you making this documentary. It's an important film. The documentary is called January 6th. Jules Norday and Igil Svet, thank you very much for joining us.